We'll look at 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 for a moment. For such are our false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. I always say the difference between those that uh, we're supposed to be transformed, being in his glory, when God transforms you, it's real. When you transform yourself, it's, it's not. Amen? Because one is a work on the inside and one is a work on the what? Outside. On the outside. Amen? For such as our false apostles, deceitful workers, got that deceitful in it, transforming themselves into apostles or sent ones. That's what apostle means, sent ones. And transforming themselves into ones sent by Jesus, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into what? Angel of light. An angel of light. And if it looks like light, it must be from God. <laughs> Don't you believe it? Yeah. Therefore, it is no great thing that his ministers be also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. And the word ministers there is the same word used for Christian ministers. It means those who go on errands for God. Literally what it means. Those that are sent on an errand. Which is the reason I really like to do only what he tells me to do because I'm on an errand. If he sends me to preach hard, I preach hard. If he sends me to preach soft, I preach soft. Because there's gobs of people wanting you to do everything. But notice it is no great thing that, he, that his ministers that are sent on errands, that are sent for a purpose, are also transformed so that they would look like ministers or, or, or an errand of righteousness or something we could say that is sent of God. Which brings me back to my message tonight. And this is a message God's been working on for a long time. And, and people say that God doesn't send cancer because he loves you. That's my, that's my message tonight. I'd say if you don't get nothing else, get that. But i got some more I want you to get. And, and, then, and I've had people say, well, you know, it doesn't really make any difference. Nobody would believe something like that. And that's the sad part is there are plenty of people that not only believe that, but are teaching other people that. And uh, this is one of my favorite ones to illustrate that. I lost my big print. Where did my big print go? An article, a uh, soon-to-be book. But I've heard it many places. You hear people that come down with cancer and they embrace their journey. Have you heard that one? Even name your thing, your journey. And I'm not thinking of Dave. I'm thinking of uh, the, the lady that introduced me and in Nelda in high school. All she talked about all the way through cancer was her journey and her journey and embracing her journey. And I think you got to have help me that. I almost said stupid. Oh, oh, you hear what I'm saying? And churches teach you this. And you go, no, churches don't teach you that. That's why heathens get healed and Christians don't sometimes because heathens aren't as dumb. Amen. I'm not trying to be mean. Somebody has to teach you that God loves you so much he'll give you cancer. Amen. You say, don't love me no more. <laughs> That's 51 shades of gray. That's not nothing you want. No. That's like the lady that was at the bookstore and she thought it was something in her style. She's in her 60s and she thought, you know, it's about hairstyles. She had 50 shades of gray. She thought it was gay. Uh, gray lovers is what she wanted. Wasn't it? Wasn't what it was whatsoever. But, but there's this impressionableness that comes along and, and we've, had, uh, we've had two uh, reports of cancer being one healed and one in remission <laughs> in the last week. Uh, one of them in Ken Connor's family. And it's, we used to pray for them little girls. We'd go to, his little girls are grown. And uh, he'd always tell me. He didn't, he didn't, always in the back of his mind, didn't think he would live a long time. Preach healing, talk about healing, read the scriptures. But we get in quiet and he would say, you know, my dad died at 55. If I'm not here, I want you to tell my children how much I love them. And he said, not the children that are living with me, they know, but the ones that are from the first marriage that you only see here and there, just glimpses. And uh, how much he regretted the first family breaking up and not being able 
to be with them. And, and he would just, he would talk about those things. And, and he thought, you know, he might die on the mission field. But when he'd get ready to go to the mission field, he'd leave me pictures and things and say, now if something happens to me while I'm gone, I want you to give these to my children. And uh, I don't know how I got back to there, but somebody in their family was healed. Stage four cancer this week. And, and, and I don't understand why some people get healed and some don't. I ain't even trying to get into that. I just want you to know that they wasn't living for the Lord and doing what's right, and they just still had enough sense to not think God gave it to them. They had enough sense to request prayer. <laughs> Amen? They didn't embrace it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And uh, this is a, an article that says, Don't waste your cancer, and I have to show it, because if I don't show it, you'll tell me I made it up. And there's the headline here. Uh, you will waste your cancer if you do not believe God designed it for you. Oh. Huh? You will waste your cancer if you believe it's a curse and not a gift. Amen? And on and on and on. You know, and then it goes into your odds rather than seeking God. But the whole idea is you're supposed to die loving God. It's their whole idea. Uh, but don't waste your cancer because you got to embrace it. And you got to believe it's a gift from God. And uh, so obviously there is a reason to speak on such things tonight. That God doesn't send cancer because he loves you. Now how do we know that's true? Because God didn't send cancer. He sent his son to show his love. Do we not know that scripture? For God so loved the what? Whoa. That he gave him what? His, help me guys, his only begotten son, amen, that whosoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life. So if God gave you cancer because he loves you, cancer is a message sent from Satan, transformed into light that it has come to show the love of God. That cancer is the manifest love of God towards you. You talk about a, a deceitful. You see what I'm saying? I mean, here is something the enemy says, I'm going to send this and make sure they take it. I'm going to send it in Jesus' name. I'm going to transform it. So instead of looking like something that's going to kill you and hurt you and kill your family and wound you, oh, I'm just going to say God sent it because he loves you. And I'd be thinking, that's kind of abusive. Amen? Now, I've had people tell me this one right here, that God loved me and he sent me cancer because I'd rather he sent it to me than somebody in my family. And God loves me and he sent it to me because he knows that I'll stay true to him. <laughs> so, I, so God's rewarding me for being faithful by sending me. That's not right, is it? It's not right. It's not right. Somebody comes to your door and says, I'm from the water company, let me in. And they're not really from the water company. That's a deceitful worker, is it not, Amen. to get in the door. And God sent his son. And God started showing me this a few weeks ago, that cancer wants to impersonate Jesus. Jesus is how God reveals himself to us. Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. And if I'm going to embrace something, I need to embrace Jesus and not what? For God so loved the world that he, that he gave cancer. No, that he gave his only begotten son. And then somebody stood in my parking lot and, and declared this to me and said, God gave me cancer so that I would get saved. The man was probably 55 years old. He's been around a little bit. And, he, and I told him, no, God didn't. He says, oh, yes, he did, because that preacher tried to get me to save, get saved. And I told him I wasn't interested, and I was diagnosed with cancer, and I just gave my life to the Lord. So God sent me this cancer. Amen? God sent me this cancer to get me saved. Well, no, God didn't send anybody cancer to get anybody saved. And I got down here. Uh, to lead you to the Lord, to lead you to God, to get you closer to God. No, he sent his one and his only son. And Jesus said it this way, I am the what? Word. So what is cancer becoming if it's what got you saved? It's the way. It becomes the way. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father through cancer. They only can come through. Amen? Amen? Amen. Oh, here's one right here. That God sent me this cancer to punish me for my sins. I should have quit smoking 50 years ago. I shouldn't have chewed. I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't have that. God has sent this cancer to punish me for my sins. Well, are you saved, sir? Well, yes, I am. But God sent this to pay me back. You know how karma works. <laughs> Don't you wish Earl had never been on television? Uh -huh. He's done more for karma. Amen. If he'd have just gone on there and preached sowing and reaping, they'd have put it off the air. What you sow, you shall surely reap. Amen. But I tell you what, you can plant some bad seeds and you might reap a harvest, but when you plant the right seed, Amen. the right seed produces so much more of a harvest that it blots out all the other. And that's the truth. Because we're saved by incorruptible seed by the Word of God. So God send, sends this cancer to punish us from our, for our sins. But what does the Bible say? It says He sent Jesus Amen. to bear the punishment. Amen? our sins. And there's a lot of church people out there. I don't even believe that Jesus was punished. He didn't bear no other. God wasn't angry with the world. God, we are a messed up generation. But he sent Jesus to bear our punishment for our sins. How do we know that? Well, what does it say? Who his own self bear our sins in his what? His, body. his own body. Not on my body. Amen. Thank God. Now, this whole thing is when cancer comes, you need to be ready to, to resist it, kick and scream and knock and slap it. Amen? Amen? I didn't say cursing, but you know what I mean. If you're going to curse something, curse it. Amen? Amen? Because if you don't resist quick, it's a doggone deceiver. It hides in your body. It, it sneaks up on you, and then it manifests. And, and it carries that fear and that connotation that it's... It's indefeatable, and I want you to know that Jesus took our punishment and our sin on his own self, who his own self bear our sins on his own body, not on my lungs because I smoked, amen, amen, not on my liver because I did too many drugs, amen, not on, not on my body because I ate too many sweets, Amen, amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You see, well, I'm just trying to express that we go over here and we own diseases and say, and we own them. And we say, well, I shouldn't have done that. You probably shouldn't have. But if it's a sin, praise God, he bore my sins. I don't have to bear them. Amen. amen. And for him to punish Jesus and punish me both is what? Any words? Well, it's unfair. It's unholy. It's unjust. Amen. Amen. I can't get nobody to agree with me that he shouldn't punish both of us, Jesus and me. That's no. If I was Jesus, I'd throw a fit and say, hey, I suffered for him. You can't put that on him too. Amen. Amen. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, on the cross, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Ooh, I like it. Amen. Yeah, amen. Who? Amen. Who stripes? Yes. Amen. Man, if God's punishing me for my sins, then He's putting stripes on me. And that says the stripes on Jesus were not amen. enough. I've heard people say it's selfish to be healed, and that's the stupidest thing I've nearly ever heard. I've heard some stupid things, but I've heard people say that it's selfish to pray to be healed. Ask your husband is toting you around. Ask your kids is taking care of you. Ask the one half when somebody starts to get old and one of them can't get out now and the other one's hostage at the house forever. You out you have to tell well, you need to get healed, only oh, be selfish me get healed. Oh, get healed, honey. Get healed, honey. Woo. Maybe they got mental problems. I tell you what, get healed. Oh, I shouldn't ask. I'm not worthy. We better get worthy because I tell you what, you better run me crazy. Dude, somebody got to have some relief. Amen. Amen. Who is on self, amen, that should live, live unto righteousness by his stripes. 
we were Well, this in here is one of my favorites here. I've had people tell me this, and I mean, we've been going back 30 years. I've dealt with these things. Godly people, people that love God, that go to all the full gospel business meetings and go here and go there, and then they'll come back and say that, that God gave me this cancer to make me a better person. Have you been around anybody that's been poked and stabbed and poisoned? They usually don't make them happy. You couldn't make my older brother mad. You could just throw him. Some of my brothers did just draw him and hit him. And he just bear hugged you until you quit fighting. It changed his personality getting poked on a regular basis. I tell you what. He never had a temper until he had cancer. When he come out the other side, he said, I ain't done no chemo if it ever comes back. That was it. It never came back. They got him down to his last vein. You ought to have seen him when they lost his last vein. He had one vein that would work. That they, they just hung on to that vein and hung on to that vein. And they lost that vein and wanted to put one on the top of his bald head. And he said, no more. We ain't doing no more. No more. No more. He said, he said you know, God doesn't give you cancer to make you a better person. That girl's right up there with making you broke to make you a better person. <laughs> so you can be mad at rich people. You can be jealous. Such a spirit of jealousy loosed in the nation right now. Uh, God doesn't give people cancer to make them better people. If so, I guess you better give all of them some. Because they're not very nice out here. I guess we'd go down here at the mall and look for people that need a self-improvement. We could give them some cancer. Uh, amen. Well, you just go by with your syringe and give them some disease to make them better people. They'll come arrest you. You can't do that. Very few people are sweeter when they're sick. Now, maybe you can get them down to where they can't get out of bed. Man, they can't do nothing. But very few people are sweeter when they're sick, unless you give them some medication. God doesn't give people cancer. And we keep saying cancer because that's what I'm talking about tonight because it's such a deceiver. It's such a liar. It's such it's been transformed into a minister of righteousness when it's from the pit of hell here to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's going to masquerade itself as, but God sent me to you. Man, it's a deceiver. It's a deceiver. God doesn't give people cancer to make them better people. Well, how do we know that? Because he gave us Jesus to do that. It's taken the place of Jesus. If it makes you... Now think about this. This is what God told me. This God said, if, 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 if my Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God are not enough to make you better people, how in the world would cancer do it? Or hard times. Or hard times. Amen? If God can't do it through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the written Word of God, written on tablets of stone on your heart, if he can't change you into a better person, what world is cancer bigger than God? No. It's a deceiver. Because if you think God's making you into a better person with it, then you just kind of have to hang on to it. Amen. Even if you don't like it, God's making me better. And he's punishing me for what I should have done. And I'll, I'm telling you what this message change cancer to anything uh, anything that comes from the enemy and it has come along and tell you that God's doing he's saving your children that's why they're in jail because he's saving them well don't save me God doesn't have to put people in jail to save them the revealing of Jesus Christ to somebody is not bound on whether you're in a mansion or whether you're in a poorhouse whether you're in jail or whether you're playing football or wherever yet the presence of God comes and that's how salvation comes now you might be more willing to hear it because the devil puts you in jail but don't you sit there and sign your children off to go down yonder so they'll come out better people because I will testify to you very few people go to jail and come out better yeah. oh I've heard that one taught in the Baptist church a lot well you know I prayed for him I prayed for him I prayed for him and I'm just going to give them over to the devil oh. <laughs> you're supposed to give them to the Lord not to the devil the goodness of the Lord leads to 
Amen. And I know people that got saved in jail. Amen. He's to preach at the prison. I understand, but I won't tell you, if it made them better people, they wouldn't be habitual criminals. They'd come out and be the sweetest little people you ever seen. And that's not right. That's like that picture I had on Facebook. You know, you're in a bad neighborhood when the bird has got an ankle bracelet Amen. and a knife. Have you seen that picture? That is cute. And an earring. I did have an earring too. I don't know. It's a, it's a picture somebody's got. I just posted it. Well, how does God make you a better person? Therefore, if any man, woman, child, sex is irrelevant. That's a good thing now that people don't know what they are. Whew. I'm trying to be honest. Now they don't even know what they are. Whatever they are, God says he can make them into what they ought to be. Amen. 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 If therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? A new creature. And old things are what? Passed away. And behold, all them things. I just like my little circles. All those things. Probably bad thing to do to a TV screen. <laughs> if a child did it, <laughs> they might get corrected quickly. <laughs> All things are become what? New. Oh, man. Back in the 80s, they had a big chalkboard bigger than that wall, and you had to write all this stuff and draw on it and do it. No, it no, technology's moved. I hadn't changed. My technology just improved. If anybody's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. We've got to catch back up on people not knowing what they were. There's a story. I can't, I can't tell you that it's true because I wasn't there. But it's a story that I've, that I've heard about uh, Tammy Baker, Tammy Faye. A lot of y'all don't remember Tammy Faye because y'all too young remember Tammy Faye. But Tammy Faye had more makeup than most people on television. She was on Christian TV way back. Not the one on TBN, everybody made fun of with the kind of pink hair and the purple hair. Way on back, Tammy was her mentor, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, but you know, hey, we had to make up. And when, uh, Jim Baker's wife, back when, and when things went south and they, uh, Christians wouldn't have nothing to do with it, she started being invited to, uh, to gay events. And uh, people said, you shouldn't go. And she said, well, they're the only ones inviting me to go anywhere. And she would go and sing. And, and talk. And the story is in one of these things that they, she went one place and they were going to have her to sing and to speak. And other people said they're just making fun of her. And they had a drag queen contest. That's men that dress like women. But tell some of these search people don't know these things. And they tried to see which one looked most like her, you know. And you know, that would have been enough right there for me. <laughs> and, uh, and after they picked one out, she came out on stage. She didn't really know they was doing this till she got out there. And when she got out there, here was her lookalike, you know. And uh, and the story goes that that uh, she just broke down in tears and and hugged him and said, "I've hid behind this stuff all of my life. I know you're hiding behind that too." See. Now see that's that's the transformation see that's that's the presence of god you felt god when it came right there i did the presence of god come who can make anything new what's well, not changing the outside if you're not happy who you are the only thing that's going to make you new is jesus amen this is one of the big ones. Church people really get a grip on this one. Even if they don't think God sent it to make you a better person, they think God sent it to teach you something. I've heard this one. Heard it, heard it, heard it, heard it, heard it. We're not talking about heard it preached. I've heard people say it on a continual basis. God sent me this to teach me something. God sent me arthritis to teach me something. He sent me AIDS to teach me something. He sent me cancer to teach me something. He sent me this right here. He sent me a husband that beats me to teach me something. Maybe to leave. Amen. I'm sorry. I had to say that. Maybe I've got a good friend that preaches all the time that you ought to stay in a difficult marriage no matter what. And it brings glory to God if you stay even with the man. Never changes. Never treats you right. Never does anything. You ought to just stay anyway. And it's a testament to God. Uh, the, there is, there are situations you need to. What God's trying to teach me something. Maybe it's to leave. Amen. Maybe stand up for yourself. Uh, now I'm not just in that situation. That's what I'm trying to say. But God sent me this cancer to teach me something. And you say, what have you learned? And you always get the same answer. Well, I don't know. I'm still learning. And what my answer always is, you better learn fast. Amen. 
You better learn quick because it's going to kill you before you figure it out. I don't want to labor that, but I want you to know that God has sent this to teach me something. Well, well, what's he teaching you? And then I get this response. I get it from people that go to church services. I get it from people that watch Christian TV. I get it from people. If you fall into this category, I'm sorry. If you fall into this category, I'm sorry. Do you hear me? I'm not accusing anybody. I'm trying to say if you fall into this category, you need to zip your lips. What's well, God teaching something? He must be teaching me. Well, that's all I'm going to say. He must be. Is he teaching you that? Well, I know he must be because I haven't got healed. He must be teaching me something else. He must be teaching me, and then the circumstance is going to fill in what he's teaching you. And what that's teaching me is that you ain't heard from God to start with, and I ain't got no confidence you can hear from him. You better quit waiting to hear from him. You ain't even hearing him. I prayed, and God must be not going to answer it. Why? Because so-and-so something else. And then there's, a, great big, there's a, a big hit song out right now, and I heard the lady tell the testimony why she wrote it. She says, well, I had a miscarriage and lost the baby, and I was really hurt. And everybody just kept saying that one verse, so I figured that must be God, what God was saying to me. So I wrote this song, and it's all over Christian radio right now. And, you know, and the lady from uh, Annabellum, uh, so they were everybody at church, everybody everywhere just kept saying, it must be thy way, it's his will be done, this his will be done. No, it wasn't his will that you had Scary. She come that you might have life, life abundantly. But does she know that that's what it is? No, but it must be. God must be teaching me. I'm telling you, if God must be teaching you, one of you is off. If God's teaching you, you ought to be able to identify. Well, just I'm being honest, and I'm going to show you the truth. We know it's not true. Why do we know it's not true? Because God sent the Holy Spirit, but the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you what? All things. things. And bring what? All things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. If, If God's doing the teaching, can you imagine going to school and they're giving you a test over something and you don't know what in the world you're supposed to learn? I went through first three grades of school like that. Didn't have a clue. I didn't know how to read. I didn't know anything they did except how to write my name on a piece of tape on the top of the thing. I just guessed at everything. I didn't know what they wanted. They didn't teach us to sound out words. They held up pictures. They'd hold up a word and a picture. Airplane. Then they'd swap them up and it'd be something else and I'd still be as wrong as anything. It'd be a car and I'm still saying airplane. I have no idea. I didn't learn. I kept it hid. I was so afraid somebody was going to find out I couldn't read. But it wasn't because I didn't try. I just couldn't even get the concept. (laughs) I just didn't have it. And one day I was walking out of the... We didn't have a living room in that house. It was the room that company came and nobody went in and touched it. And it didn't stay perfect. (laughs) Which didn't make any sense because we never had company. (laughs) But it was that way back in the 60s anyway. They'd have a room that you didn't go in because company might come, you know. And uh, and Baptist, the closest company we had was Baptist knocking on the door and inviting you to come to church. And Mama would tell them all she's Catholic. And i said, what are you going to do if the Catholics come? She says, the Catholics don't come. And so far she's been right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So far she was right. I didn't know. And we had a bunch of kids. She said, we look Catholic. I didn't know what Catholics was except they had a bunch of kids. And as I was walking through that room, stepping into the little hallway, uh, I heard a voice say, if you want to be, be the smartest kid in the room. And I said, okay. Went, that was during the summertime. Went back to school in the fall. 1969 in the fall, I was the smartest kid in the class. I could read. I couldn't just read. I could read and understand. And made teachers mad. Because... They thought you were supposed to take a long time to do it, and I could just look at the page and see what mattered. God gave me the gift to see what matters. You can't. Maybe you can teach that. I couldn't learn to read. And God gave me that gift. 
And I thought everybody got it. And I, I was so disappointed when Angela didn't flip her switch and suddenly know how to do everything. I really expected her to reach a certain point and it all just makes sense. <laughs> I was disillusioned because I didn't realize I'd got a gift. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. If you're having trouble learning biology, God will teach you all things. He's not limited. If you're having trouble learning to drive, He teaches you. He, can, he gave me the gift to be able to look at a test and understand what to put. He also gave me a gift to hear during the week to know what was on the test. It was just like you know, unimportant stuff just fell off and the important things were right there. And it didn't just work with one teacher. It worked in schools all over the country continually. And God did that. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Man, I tell you what, I, if, if hard times taught people, there ought to be some, some well-taught people out there. Now, what does the Bible say about it? The Bible says uh, how God anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. With what? The Holy Ghost and power. And what did he do? What about doing good? And healing. So I can't see it. Y'all have to read it to me. I can't find it. Healing all. There it is. And what does it say that he was healing all from? They were oppressed. We know it's diseases because they were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. God didn't send Jesus to come and undo the works of God. He sent Jesus to come and undo the works of the enemy. Amen. 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 And, and, and people get all hung up, but I didn't see Jesus show up to anybody, anybody that came to him and said, you know, I'd like to get rid of that leprosy, but you know, I sent that to teach you something. No, I still love and, and I sent that one over there to make <coughs> you a better person. I still work on that. I, he turned nobody down that came to him. Amen. Amen. Not one time did he say, well, I'm going to heal that one, that one, and that one. But you know, God sent you that one. But the devil sent them five. But them three over there, that came from God. So, I do it. Not once. He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The devil's not new at this. He's been telling people that he was the, the messenger of God for a long time. This one here tells it too. Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of what? Now, now, people say that physical ailments are just physical ailments. That don't say it's just a physical ailment, guys. She had a physical ailment. It was manifest on her body. But what was the cause of it? That's what it was. It was a spirit, and I'm not trying to teach, but it's a spirit that manifested itself. Its personality was infirmity. Okay? If it wasn't uh, well, she had a big, she was bent over, had a big hump on her back, and she was bent all over and couldn't lift herself up. But a spirit of infirmity, you can treat something with antibiotics and it just manifested something else. And you can treat it with this and it manifests its spirit of infirmity. It's manifesting itself. And how many years was it doing that? You want to study, check out the 18 years in the scripture. Just punch it in your study Bible. Well, I mean, you know, you got a Bible. Uh, punch it in your phone. Two different occasions in Judges, the children of Israel were in bondage to the enemy for exactly 18 years. Two different times. Two different times. So it's not an accident that this time, this number 18 years is there. Another thing about the 18 years thing to me is, uh, oh gosh, is that that's when in America you're legally grown, so it's almost like you've had this all of your, got that idea going, you know, that it's been there so long now that it's a part of you. Uh, spirit of infirmity, 18 years, was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself. Wow, lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, whew, praise God. When he saw her, what did he do? He called her. And he called her to who? Him. He didn't call her to embrace her situation because she could already do that. He called her to him. I just can't find my place up here. I can see it here, though. And he said unto the woman, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. Now, where is it at? Can you show me where it's at up there? Anybody? Can you? See? I can't see it. You are loose. Here it is. Thine. That looks like time to me. That's what was throwing me off. I want you to know that to start with, I'm not trying to, to labor. This is my last scripture. I want you to know that it said... 
that this woman had a spirit of what? Infirmity. We're going to see down at the bottom that Jesus is going to say that Satan has bound this woman for 18 years. I want you to see that in between the time that she had the spirit of infirmity sent by the enemy somewhere along the way, it became what? Hers. Somewhere along the way she'd owned it. Somewhere along the way it had took on her. She had took on it. You see what I'm trying to say? We could say she embraced it. See what I'm trying to say? It was tailor-made for her. It fit her. And if you've never been delivered, you can talk all you want to about a Christian. can't have a demon. Christians can have demons. Yes, they can. They, well, they can. Amen. Yeah. They can. Yeah. And most astounding parts of it that people say cast out devils and then they think, well, they're not inside of Christians. Christians can't have one. Then how are you casting them out? <laughs> if they were already out, you could just say, well, you wouldn't say out, would you? Maybe. I command you to stay away in the name of Jesus, maybe. But, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah. Somebody's in the car, you want them to get out, you say, kids, get out of the car. Yeah. And they can come out. One of the most astonishing facts is that they're your size. They're shaped like you. I had that experience. I had that experience where when one left, it left, and when it did, it was exactly my size. It fit to my toes, to my hands. It fit everywhere, and it went out. And when it went out, it was just moving, and I said, I have a revelation. It can't go out unless it's in. That's a funny story, but it's not. I've also seen spirits that were in one person, be it another person. Recognize the spirit that you cast out of somebody over here being a different person two years later. The same spirit. It had moved around. They do that. Now see, if you own it and it's your infirmity, you have to protect that sucker. It's a part of you. Feed it and love it and pet it. It's yours. But once you realize it's not yours, it's free to you. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to close. But the woman said, You are loosed of your infirmity. And then he laid his hands upon her. And immediately she was made what? Straight. Straight. And glorified who? God. Amen. And the ruler of the synagogue, he says, No, 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 don't do that. He got mad. He asked with indignation because Jesus had healed. I'm going to add her on the Sabbath day and said there are six days men ought to work and then come be healed not on the Sabbath day that's another lie it's not your time to be it's not your day it's not your time God only heal you on certain days now, and the Lord answered and said you're a hypocrite don't you uh, on the Sabbath loose your ox or, or donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering ought not this woman being a what daughter, daughter of Abraham whom who is bound Satan that's what it says. Amen? Satan has bound low these 18 years. Shouldn't she be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? Whew, Sabbath is rest. And when he had said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for the glorious things that were done by him. Jesus had no trouble defining sickness as being from the enemy. And now you know, we get into practical things. Somebody say, well, if you know all that, how come you're sick? I know who my friend is. I know who the enemy is. I know who I'm going to embrace, and I know who I'm going to fight like cat and dogs. I, I know, and, and you know, I, I say it, and I don't want to be graphic for young kids, but I tell, I say it all the time. I say it online. I say it in person. I try to say it in a graphic manner so people will understand. You have to resist cancer like he's a rapist. You cannot sit and say, oh, this is going to be a lovely experience sent by my father. No, you have to fight. Amen? You have to say, no, this didn't come from my God. This is the, the faster you know that something is from the enemy, the faster you can resist it. Now, see, if I don't know where something's from, I don't want to oppose God. I don't want to resist God. I don't want to be caught up in God doing something and I'm opposing it or I'm resisting it. That happens in religious circles all the time. Well, we don't do them tongues. Well, why not? Because we just know. You probably end up resisting God because the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today and for everybody. You could wind up on the wrong side because your theology's wrong. 
But I'm telling you, you can't afford to waffle in the middle when your life is hanging in the balance. Even heathens believe in angels in car wrecks. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. They do. I argued with a man one day. They didn't believe God did anything supernatural anymore. And I said, are you saved? And he said, yes. I said, that's as supernatural as it gets. And he said, well, except for that. <laughs> it was Church of Christ. But he was picking on these poor Baptists that don't believe in tongues. And they were trying to defend, they were trying to defend things in the Bible like healing that they didn't even believe in. And after they got beat on so bad, he was bullying them. So I just got in the middle of it at work. And the more people, time we, it got quieter and quieter. When we got done, there was a, everybody in the building was standing around there. And they sold the place the next week. And I got, to, I got to minister to the whole place before they sold it. Most of them people were gone in a week. God did that. And somebody said, weren't you afraid of him? Afraid? What? Afraid of the lies of the enemy? I know the truth. I know the Holy Spirit. The faster you know what side you're on, you're on God's side. Now, I'm trying to stop, but I've got to say it one more time. So many times we fall for one of those first few lies. God's paying me back. I was a bad person early in life before I got saved. He's paying me back. Shame. Why don't you fall for it? Don't you fall for it. Jesus made you like you ain't got no past. Don't you fall for it. God's teaching me something. Then here's the here's the Bible. Here's the Word of God. There's the Holy Spirit. Amen. If he's teaching me I should have read my Bible, then read it. Amen. I didn't give you cancer for that. The faster you get rid of those first few questions and say this is an attack. This is a trespasser. This is someone that does not belong in my body. The faster you can figure out that sickness don't belong there, the faster you can draw near to God. Resist the devil. And I don't care what nobody says. If you think God's hurting you, it's hard to draw near to somebody that you think is hurting you. If you think he's the one doing it, it is hard to embrace the portrait. Now, they'll do it while they're telling you they want you to do their funeral. And then they'll call you back about three weeks before they die and say, I hurt so bad. Why is God doing this to me? And I tried to tell you six months ago God wasn't doing this to you. I don't care what somebody said at such and such meeting. God ain't doing it. The faster you can draw near to God, you can resist the devil. And he'll what? Does everybody get healed? That's God's business. I can't even make myself get healed. But I can tell you what I ain't going to do. I'm not going to embrace the devil when he comes by wearing a badge saying I'm deputy. God sent me here to enforce the law. And I said, I'm not under the what? Law. Amen? Under grace. under grace. The soul that sins, it shall die. <laughs> God has given us life. Abundantly. That's no condemnation on anybody that's perished. And thank God Jesus said if we believe on him, we're never going to what? Amen. Amen. And we all got to die of something if Jesus don't come back. But cancer ain't getting me. I'll just tell you right doggone now. It ain't getting me. Amen. Not me either. And I ain't signing up for heart disease. I ain't standing Amen. up for stupid disease. I ain't standing no, up for no. nothing. No. That's Alzheimer's except it's voluntary. <laughs> I'm just stupid. I'm just going to sit here and waste my last years watching the television screen. Amen. Well, Father, we do pray in the powerful name of Jesus. I know that's stuff that a lot of people in here know, but it's a wake-up call. Father, I know there's people all... I don't know if we're even on screen anymore, but if we are. Father, I know there's people everywhere online that, that heard bits and pieces of it. Father, I pray that you'd stir it, send it where it needs to send so that people don't fall for the false witnesses, for the angels of light, but will stand and believe that you're a big enough God to defend them from the attacks of the enemy. And Father, I just bless you tonight, Father. Uh, uncomfortable sharing it, but at the same time, knowing it's your word. Thank Father for bringing fruit of it. Fruit of it in Jesus' name.
Amen.